Hi, this is Yosef Bharatiya. Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us once again Ellen Clark, CTO office at Suza and Open ELA board member. Ellen, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's great to be back. Uh, yesterday I had a discussion with Greg, and today we are going to talk about the ISP side of Open ELA. But before we kind of deep dive into this uh, discussion, just tell our viewers what is Open ELA all about and why was it created? Well, so Open ELA is a nonprofit trade association, right? So it has a legal entity behind it. And the focus is on open source Linux distribution for developers and ISVs and consumers. So our mission is to provide a secure, transparent, and reliable enterprise Linux source code that is globally available to everybody, right? And make it as a buildable base. So the, as you mentioned, the organization was founded by uh, CIQ. You talked to Greg yesterday. Uh, uh, Oracle's a founder and SUSE as well. And uh, the foundation is complete. We got all that under our belt. And we're off and running, and it's open for anybody to join. First of all, let's also talk about what role do ISVs play in the Linux ecosystem, and why should they join OpenELA? Sorry, this could be a little bit of a long answer, but let me give you a little bit of a basis. So I stated what the, the, uh, the trade association is there for, um, and we have several projects in there, right? So, of course, we have the enterprise Linux source base, and that source is the basis for today's compatible distros, right? And then secondly, what we added to that was automation, uh, which reduces and, and eliminates all those mundane tasks of pulling that source together and, and cleaning it and making it ready for everybody to use. So we've also added additional projects uh, around documentation that support the installation and administration of of the enterprise distros and then fourth we added uh most recently a uh, long-term kernel support recognizing that um, today's enterprises need support that can go beyond years of community support and um, so giving that basis now we can talk about okay why is this of interest to isvs and when you think about that question, it's really interesting that one of the things that makes Linux so special is the number of and proliferation of distros that are out there today. It seems like I see a new one pop up all the time, and that's awesome. I find that awesome. That enables enterprise users to have specially built, purpose-built distributions that solve particular needs at the time they need it, right? So it gives us tons of choice and gives consumers tons of choice and solutions for specific problems that they're trying to address. But on the ISV side, that raises a big issue because now those consumers are coming to me saying, hey, I'm using this distro to solve a particular problem, but I need your, your services and applications to run on that. Well, for an ISV, that's a serious business question, right? Um, supporting a distro adds market share, potentially market share for me, but it adds potentially porting costs and support costs. And so, you know, supporting a number of distros is not a simple, sure, we'll do that type of question. It, it's a, it creates an overhead and burden. So the advantage that Open ELA and, and the purpose of Open ELA was to create a distribution of source code. So we're not a binary. We're not adding a yet another distro to the, to the market. What we're trying to do is enable and encourage the development of binary distributions that are based on an enterprise Linux standard. Okay, And so what this offers is it enables um, consumers to uh, support multiple distributions in their environment, but it offers and it makes a strong option for ISVs who typically only want to have to support, you know, the top two distributions, two or three distributions. 
it enables them to support additional distributions because they recognize that they are truly compatible with those top two or three distributions in the market. So it, it, by forming this consortium, um, we're enabling them to set the standard, set um, their support based on a standard, right? An enterprise Linux standard and not have to say a particular distribution. We're trying to enable, or we are enabling ISVs to be able to support multiple distributions in a multiple distribution environment for their consumers without the burden of additional support and testing and so forth. Can you also talk about that? What kind of concerns ISVs have with vendor lock-in? I mean, generally we would assume that it's open source, so there's no vendor lock-in, but that is not the fact. You can have vendor lock-in even with open source. Let's talk about the, the concern and then how OpenELE kind of mitigates or addresses that vendor lock-in problem. Yeah, that's a great question. And it actually goes to one of the, one of the you know, there's several motivations, but one of the heart felt motivations for open source, and that is vendor independence, right? Um, and this is a very topical today because, uh, you know, in some of the new technology areas, there's a lot of vendor lock-in that's, that's trying to occur. But the, the motivation here for vendor independence is that um, open source allows companies to be less dependent on a specific vendor. And we're seeing those cases happen today where consumers have gotten locked into a single vendor, right? And then they get bought out by somebody or management changes or the company's motivation changes or they get out of the market or whatever. And all of a sudden, right, the consumers left um, stuck and the ISVs themselves can get stuck because if they tie into uh, any specific interfaces or uh, ABIs uh, or so forth, right? All of a sudden, they're stuck on a dead market. And, um, you know, it's not a new threat. This this threat's have been going on for a long time, but it's very topical because it just doesn't go away. And it seems like as we add new technology, um, the threat reemerges, right? And so we think open source is key to address this, not only for vendor lock-in, but to address... Uh, the compatibility as well, right? So, so you could say, well, it's open source, but it's a single vendor open source. Well, that's still not good, right? So we want to address that compatibility layer as well as the vendor locking points. So the, the point here is um, to emphasize that by making um, the source open and available, building it as an enterprise standard we're going to avoid this issue that's plaguing some of the areas uh, in open source right now. You know, a good example of that is is in the AI area, right? There are a lot of people are claiming open source, but it's still a single vendor and a, and a lock-in model. Once again, very well said. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, of course, open ELA, as you in the beginning explained the whole idea with the source code for you know business users, but what is specific work are you folks doing or planning to do in future for the benefit of ISVs? As I mentioned earlier, some of our projects, one of our projects is, is automation, right? So we're, we're, we want to make this one, we want to remove the, the um, fragility of individual people. So automation is key, right? So we can automate it, we get speed, we get accuracy, uh, we get the source code available as quickly as possible. And by through automation, we can also push um, the standards aspect of that. So it's not tied to any single individual. It's not tied to, you know, any slow timetable. Um, so speed, accuracy through automation is, is the first key here. I think that's going to be very important to ISVs because they want to be quick to get to market, right? And so um, by automating this process, it's going to enable them to get to market quicker. Um, second thing that we're uh, very much going to work on this year is increasing the membership of our organization. Um, and in particular, we want to focus on, of course, you know, 
we want all the distros in the world to come and participate with us. Um, but we also want to get the perspectives of ISVs and other organizations um, to come and participate as well, get their voice. ISVs can join and just become passive members or what active role they can play in Open ELA? Yeah, that's a really great question because you could look at it and go, well, I'm not a distro, so why would I join this, right? <laughs> You're just creating source code for distros. And that's why I wanted to, to I apologize earlier for elaborating on all the different projects. Um, but the point there is there are many things that we would love to get their viewpoint. The ISVs have a very different perspective uh, and than a distro, right? Uh, and we want to get those perspectives. We want to hear those perspectives. Um, we want to hear what the barriers are uh, from their perspective, what the challenges are from their perspective, so we can address those and, and make uh, this is more you know, increase the viability of, of this source uh, for their use, right? So we need their voice. Um, we want to understand their pain points, as I mentioned, so we can address them. And so having their voice, I think, is key to our success this next year. Alan, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, talk about Open ELA and the role ISV scan or are playing in this space. Thanks for those great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great holiday.